everyone welcome back in this playwright tutorial i'm going to talk more about the playwright locators and we'll see we have already seen about the css and xpath locators how you can use them in the previous video now let's move further and see that how you are going to locate in shadow down right so if you see this documentation here all the locators in playwright by default will work with the elements that are within shadow down okay there are some expect exceptions basically if you're locating by xpath that does not appear pierce uh, shadow roots or or close more shadow roots uh, are not supported you can read more details in here okay but by default if you are using uh, within playwright any of the locating element strategies within playwright except the xpath you will be able to use or locate the web elements that are within the shadow dom so for example this shadow root and anything within that basically that you will be able to identify okay so that's by default available now another very important thing in playwright locator strategies is about filtering right so filtering locator so if we go further you will see that we can basically use different methods that are available within playwright to filter the locators right for example i can do filter by text okay so if i go filter by text you will see that there is a method filter which you can specify to have a particular text so for example a web element in your page has a particular text then you just say dot filter okay you have a root node and then within root node there are some child nodes and child node have some name within that particular uh, for that particular web element you can specify that name to filter out of multiple locators let's understand how you can achieve it right so filter by text and then filter by not having text so not having text is just opposite of having text okay now for this demo i'll go ahead and use this source demo website this is the test website which is basically you will get some sort of online products you can add them to cart etc so we'll use that now let's go quick quickly and write a test to login and then go further to understand the filter look or filtering method okay so i'll go here and i'll simply copy the existing one that i have and paste it and i'll rename it as filter demo and we'll start fresh okay so i'll say filter demo dot spec dot js okay so this is the file and now let me close everything and i'll remove all of the code that is existing there okay so we can understand everything from scratch okay so we have already understood that yes basically we are opening this source demo website right and then what we need to do once the website is open we need to identify this username the password provide username and password and then click on login button right so i'll quickly write these three steps in my script so that my script can understand and log in right so in order to identify the web element username and type in something we'll simply go ahead right click and inspect and see what all details are available here okay so we'll analyze this particular locator okay uh, the code behind it and you'll see we have a placeholder username here okay so we'll use placeholder here you can use other attributes as well if you want but then within playwright we have a method by placeholder already right so if placeholder is available i'll go ahead and use the playwright method and use the placeholder okay so i'll simply say okay i'll just use await and then page dot get element or get by placeholder right and what is the placeholder that is available the placeholder that is available is for the username is username right so basically then this will identify this particular web element when i say username and then i'll say get the web element by user by placeholder username and then i want to type in something i want to type in the username so i'll say dot and then fill i want to fill this by something okay so by the username okay and this is when you say page dot get holder and then you say again dot and and then use the other method this is basically chaining of the method okay and i'll explain all all of that in a detail and i'll also cover a couple of things um in the initial videos about uh you know different uh, fixtures so i'll if you haven't gone through the initial lectures go ahead and understand about the fixtures what exactly is page and etc okay so i've covered all of that so now we'll fill this with the username okay so what is the username the sample username that is available so if you see that these are the standard username accepted username so I'll say standard user 
copy it and use that here okay so this will pass in the username now similarly there is a placeholder available for the password as well so i'll copy the same thing and then get by placeholder the other field is password so i'll simply analyze that and you say the password field has a placeholder attribute and the password uh, or the value is password right so i'll say password okay and then fill with the password whatever password is being specified here so i'll say secret sauce this is the password you'll see that is already displayed on their demo website okay so i'll simply paste that and the third step is basically to identify the button okay so you'll see that this is the button all right now the button we can know we know that within playwright there is a method to identify elements by role now this is a button so the role of this is uh, what what is the role so we'll simply go ahead and click and inspect you will see that it will highlight that particular uh, button all right the code behind it and now let's go back here and say identify it by get by role okay so get by role and what all roles are so you'll see role uh, different roles here and you will see the role is button okay now that is the button so we'll know that yes we'll simply go ahead and use the role button okay and then what we need to do we need to click on it now because on this particular page there is just single button available right you see that there is no other button so i can straight away you know there, there won't be any sort of conflict in this particular case and it should work all right but in case there are multiple buttons and one button has the login written there the other button has something else then you have to specify the other action Attribute. so script is able to identify it uniquely so i'll keep it as simple button and then what we want to do we want to simply click right now in case this doesn't work right so for example you have multiple buttons on a page this won't work so you have to specify the different attributes which will be mentioned here right so for example finding by role locating by role okay so you'll see that yeah there was a there was an input you know label uh, checkbox so here we have get by role button and then you specify the name right so you can specify within the curly brackets comma separated the name so in this case if i had to specify the name so in the curly braces simply here i can say i'll say comma separated and i'll put a curly brace there okay i say name of the button right so i'll simply write the name of the button and what is the name of the button the name of the button is login and how you have to write to colon and then specify the name okay and then dot click all right so this i have anyways i've explained in the previous method so simply use that as of now this is unique so i will simply keep it as is now this will log into the page right now you, once you have logged into the into the page we'll understand about the filtering okay so filter by text now when we say filter by text i'll explain you what exactly it means so i'll simply log in with the user standard user and the password and i'll show you the list of products okay so i have logged in now the script will be doing the same thing right it will be putting in the username and password and log in here now here you will see the list of uh, different product item now say for example all these product item or any shopping website there will be product items and then we'll be having this add to cart button right so add to cart you will see across the product it is common now if i have to filter these products based on certain name and then say okay once i have filtered this sauce labs bold t-shirt then click on add to cart right so filter by this name and then add to cart okay then click on add to cart so that is where filter method will be helpful now if i simply identify so i have highlighted this little icon and let's see if we see where exactly or how these products are listed right so there'll be little containers you will see that there is a div or this is the major or the root div wherein all the inventories is right so id with inventory container and then below that you will see we have an inventory list okay and then each inventory item has a an image div and then there is an item description right so you'll see different item description so you will see that inventory item okay so inventory list and then each inventory item is in a different div with a inventory item class now if we simply go ahead and say now because within the inventory list there are different product items now if we say filter this particular product item filter a product item which has sauce slaps bold t-shirt now this one is highlighted you will see i have clicked on or just hovered over this particular item you'll see this is highlighted now i want to because with this particular locator if i simply want to say for example i want to locate this particular item all right so if i say simply go to the list this item i simply copy the x path okay say control f and this is the x path all right which is basically specific to this particular product but 
I want to filter, I want to check all the products. Okay, so all the product will be inventory items. So inventory item, cl uh, the class is inventory item. So I'll say, okay, I'll say class is inventory item. Okay, you'll see that six, pro whatever products were there, they are listed here. Now out of this, let me put it to the single quote. So it is not a confusion and I, I'll, so here you will see six items all right so there are six inventory items now out of this so when i'll use this particular locator to locate the product so this will list me or this will locate all the products now out of those products that will be filtered or that will be located by this particular locator because these locator this locator will have multiple products right i can then use filter to filter based on the name of the products that are identified by this locator and then in the filter i'll provide the text which will search for a particular product based on the name that i'll provide and then i'll say add to cart okay so let me quickly go ahead and use this locator and in the code here so i'll say okay page dot locator now this is the xpath locator right so i'll simply use the xpath so it'll say selector right so selector is and i'll use double quotes there so i'll say xpath okay and then when you use xpath or css selector you have to use the equal to sign and then in the brackets here i'll put the xpath locator all right so this will locate that particular all the products which have all the products on the page right because this is the locator which will identify multiple items on the page okay now out of those multiple items i want to filter based on some names okay so i can then chain i can say dot and then start typing in filter and as soon as you will start typing in filter this is the method and i can specify the options okay filter options and if you see the documentation here you will see that filter option is a by text right so you can simply say okay for the filter specify has text okay and then specify the text that you want to search for okay so i'll simply say and i'll move this to here and i'll say shift alt f to format so now filtering based on text okay so what text i want to filter or which product i want to filter let me say i want to filter this sauce labs bold t-shirt okay so i'll copy that text and i'll say okay filter by uh, the text which has text okay now this will this xpath is returning so many items out of those items i want to filter the item which has text this and then do something right so and then i want to say dot okay i can simply say you know like dot after this this as well okay so dot all right and then simply click on what so for this product i want to click on this add to cart right now in order to click add to cart as well i have to first identify the locator where exactly my script knows that i have to go here and click on add to cart right so i'll say dot and then in the playwright i have different methods the locator methods so the method that you can use here is the built-in one so locate by role now this is button right so if you see this particular swag life this is button okay so this is a role button so i can say okay by role this time and say and then specify the name that is there so if you go to the documentation by role okay and then there is a button and then for the button i can specify the name all right so i'll say dot get by role all right let me move it here so you can see clearly and within the brackets i want to specify the role okay so the role is button okay and then comma separated within the curly braces you specify the details of the button now the there are many buttons okay on this page there are many buttons add to cart buttons are so many right six buttons are there maybe there is something else which is button as well right so which button what, what is the name right so now because with the filter i have filtered only within this area of the page right now the locator that i have used is returning all these products with the filter method i have only put the control or my script is now only in this area now the script knows that i have to find the button within this area so i have said dot button okay and then click on that button okay but it's always good to specify the name right so i'll go ahead and say dot get by role and then specify the name but even if you don't specify this it should work okay even if you don't specify the name of the button it should still work okay and then i'll say dot click let's try that okay let's try that dot click and then this will click on that particular button and the product item will get added to the cart okay so now just try to understand we are locating the on the page we are locating or we are having a locator which is returning multiple items okay for example multiple products out of those multiple products i am then filtering based on i only want to buy this t-shirt okay so i 
I'm specifying filter this t-shirt which has this name okay then go to the button which is basically the third step get by rule go to the button and then click on that button for that particular product okay it's as simple as that so now if I go ahead and let's try to execute and see what happens the browser has opened yeah it has logged in and you'll see the item has been added in the right hand side you will see straight away it has one item if I click on this you will see sauce labs bold t-shirt is added in the cart right so this is basically how you are going to use the filter by text okay now if I go back to the code why did it work right why this get by role button work because I have already filtered a product with which has the scope in this area right now I don't have to specify that okay button has name add to cart specifically because I know within this particular area there is only one button there is only one button which has whole button and that is why it has been able to successfully click on it okay if there would have been multiple buttons then you have to specify the name here right so for example comma separated okay and then the name right which is basically how it is shown here so name and then colon and then specify so I can also say name colon and then I can say add to cart either way all right so this is more specific wherein you are specifying okay click on this uh, on the button which has this particular name all right so either ways it is going to work no problem with that okay so if I go ahead and rerun it with this and rerun should still be fine yeah it has logged in and you'll see the item has been added as well okay so this is basically how we are going to use filter now the next thing is if we go further all right so we have used the filter and then filter by text filter by not having text if you see the method here it is just the negative or opposite of having text so for example I want to find or I want to filter the there are multiple locators and I want to filter something which doesn't have a particular text then you use not having text all right rest all approach that I have explained is going to remain same then we have filter by child or descendant okay so if you go to the filter by child all right so previously we have used the text right now in the next video I'll cover how you are going to use filter by child or descendant or filter by not having child or descendant okay so that's all for this video thank you very much see you in the next lecture